So as announced yesterday, we have Dr. Christian Bizanga is making his entrance and been eagerly awaited since yesterday. We're waiting. Dr. Bizanga, please come. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. As we say, good morning, good morning show. So how are you? I'm very well, very happy to be with you. Thank you for inviting me onto your set. We waited for you yesterday. Ah, yeah, yesterday uh, I was disrupted. I was scheduled at the university, the medical school. Okay, would you like to present the doctor? Dr. Christian Bazang is a hair surgeon. What does that mean to be a hair surgeon? A surgeon basically deals with the tre treatment of hair pathologies, among other things, hair transplantation to restore hair that has been damaged either by different types of loss or inborn genetic conditions such as alopecia in men. Even in men, boredness. Yeah, boredness in men is that name. So you're a doctor who fixes boldness. Oh, so I'm a doctor who deals with hair loss. Is it a bit like plastic surgery? It's a cosmetic surgery for the most part, but it's also therapeutic in some cases, especially for women. Women are not programmed to lose their hair, so when they lose hair, restoration can't be considered only as cosmetic, but also it's curative, in fact. That's fine. I have a question, like many mums or people at home would have, they're very attentive to what's being said now. What is the cause of hair loss in black women today? So the majority of black women who lose their hair have an entity called traction alopecia. So it's due to extensions, hair extensions and so on. Really? Yeah, and traumatic alopecia due to relaxers that burn the scalp and can cause hair loss. So trying to understand the extensions, what do they do? Is it because the extensions are placed, you know, it makes them look obviously beautiful, it's very popular with women, and then you say there are consequences. There are consequences simply because the hair extension has a weight. So the weight of the extension is greater than the weight of the hair anchor in the long run. The hair root Root will be pulled eventually the hair root will give way so what happens is from extension to extension you have less hair wow that's so we have that's how we have less hair yeah you you get the hair loss it usually starts at the front area and usually extends above the ears behind the ears we call it marginal loss it's a scourge. It's a scourge in our communities. It was a scourge for black women. Statistics say that 50% of black women at the age of 50 have hair loss. That's one in two at the age of 50. And when you're in your prime of your career and your life, you, and you don't have hair, which it, let's not forget it is really the woman's glory, her beauty. Exactly. But the hair loss afterwards in the statistics, 50% of women at 50 lose their hair. Is it a consequence of bad habits acquired when they were younger? Particular, the locks that are tight, the hair extensions that weigh down the head, the relaxing products that are used. It's written on the instructions that you have to wait six to eight weeks between relaxing. Some people wait four, then relax, and then they see growth and relax again. Is it because of bad habits or our genetics as black women? I don't think it's genetic. I think it's a practice that we have acquired over the years have led to the use of more and more products. And you have to know that these relaxers have caustic sodas. Caustic soda is, is nothing more than a detergent to clean your toilet. 
So when you're scrubbing your toilet at home, you're using the detergent, and it says on the instructions, put on gloves because it burns. It's very powerful. It's very powerful, but the black woman will put it and take the product and put it on their heads. That's because the hair is hard and frizzy. Yeah, it can be a little bit unruly. But do we have to destroy our health because we want to make our hair straight? There are ways to, to do these oil baths. There are so many other things you can do, other treatments that will make the hair silky and easier to cooperate with. But the easiest way is to switch to relax, and you should know that most relaxers also contain other products that are called endocrine disruptors. disruptors. So, I'll just get into that. My next question, because I attended your conference on Sunday. On Sunday, we were the doctor. We had an interesting conference. I hope you watched it on Zoom and Facebook. It was live. You talked about fibroids. Mum, do you know what fibroids are? It's one of those undesirable things that we have in the belly or in the uterus and all that, the myomas and fibroids. You said some fibroids are even the consequence of relaxing. There's a study that appeared in 2012 in the Journal of Epidemiology that showed a direct link between the use of relaxers in black women and the number of uterine fibroids. So it's a very high price to pay when the fibroids, there's often sterility issues. So it's a very high price to pay. This message has started to get through because sellers of relaxers, the problem uh, is not sterility. Uh, the problem is selling. It's about making money. It's about making money. It's not about a public health issue. You have to pound the table to say there are links in this. I'd like to know the links because... Yes, because these products and they are byproducts that look like our hormones. Oh, okay. So when they show up in the body, the body will believe there is a hormone that tells it to move or multiply. And so other reactions start to take place in the body, which lead to the multiplication of these myomas. And we see, for example, the endocrine disruptors that more and more young girls are starting to menstruate at the early age of seven or even eight. The age of uh, this is only decreasing, so the consequences of all these endocrine disruptors we find in cosmetic products, but also in food, in other things. So it's important we take back control of our bodies. It's the only place where we can decide for ourselves. It's so important to understand the use of these products should be something perhaps exceptional and not something that we use time after time again. Because exposure, you can imagine if you start to get relaxed at seven, you can imagine the result after 40 years you have really will have no hair. But it's still weird. Before we get to the remedies, you're going to suggest later, one of the causes of hair loss is the straightening iron. How can it damage women's hair? So straighten irons, they bring heat and warmth. You know that Afro hair has less water content than other hair, than European or Asian hair. So when we use heat, we remove more water. So we're going to make the hair susceptible to breakage because being frizzy, it naturally tends to knot and break. So this aggression will aggravate the breakage problem and so people say to me, it's been two years now, my hair isn't growing, it isn't the same height, and there are issues with it. And so the problem gets worse. Mm -hmm. 
It's true. But that isn't really the issue. We have broken the hair so much it doesn't grow anymore. In fact, I would like to understand the hair. It grows, but it's difficult to keep the lengths. Is it the lengths that break? Yeah, because there are knots that cause the lengths to break. Exactly. So take care of hydrate. Hydration means water, not oil, not grease, not sheer butter. Hydration is water. So you have to bring water to your hair, except for the black woman who has an inversion to water. She has an inversion to water. You and I drink water every day. That's right. Hair has to drink water. Okay, so you need a spray with water. Yeah. I'm anxious to start with uh, the baldness, baldness in men. I'd like to understand how it works because I feel a, a bit aggressive. I'd like to know how you go about getting rid of baldness. You should know that for men, unlike women, hair loss is genetic. 99.5% of cases. It's because we have inherited genes from our parents, our grandparents, makes us susceptible to developing baldness. In fact, the baldness we develop is due to a hormone called DHT, dihydrotestosterone. And so it's the exposure to uh, DHT, testosterone, that causes this. Slowly the frontal line starts to go back, the temples open and deeper, and then on top of the skull will thin through to the cortex as the crown. As you can see on the screen, if we can see some pictures on the screen, the hair starts to thin, the final stage is different, but the first stage is thinning, you can lose ah, you can lose volume and you start to notice it. So at this point we can start medication treatments that stop the evolution. So it's still in the beginning. In the beginning it's when it's advanced, you look at someone who's bald, they lose the hair on top. But they still have hair around the, around the crown. Mm -hmm. a, bit like in, a bit like in the picture. Okay. And those hairs are on the side to the back, genetically programmed not to fall out. I like the hair on top, which is fold, genetically programmed to fall. Because it's so sensitive to hormones, the DHT, dehydrotestosterone. So the aim of surgery is now to move the hairs that are genetically programmed not to fall out behind in the sides and replace and replant them. A bit like we do in a field, you take plants and you plant them uh, in, in a spaced way, but there's a logic and so afterwards the hair will grow back and you'll be back to the hair that you wanted when you were younger. Generally it makes you look 10 years or so younger. People say, oh, I've taken 10 years off my life. So is surgery dangerous? It's not dangerous at all. The operation is done under local anesthetic. The patient will awake during surgery. It's true, it's meticulous operation. It's microsurgery. It takes between 8 and 12 hours. But in any case, the patient is awake. They're not under general anesthesia. Um, it's local, not general. And people are healthy. It goes like clockwork. Is it 100% successful? The indications were established. There's no scalp. If there's no scalp pathology, the operation is successful. A success in most cases. You're a hair doctor surgeon. That's impressive. I haven't seen many here in the uh, Republic of Congo. You're the first to practice a profession here, or are there others? Here in DRC, um, there are not in Lubumbashi and, and even in Africa, there are very, very few. When you go to international conferences, the black surgeons or sub-Saharan origin are counted on one finger on one hand. So it's very exciting uh, speciality, but requires self-sacrifice, training, because different hairs have different behaviours. But we want to bring this experience to the, the uh, 
Democratic Republic of Congo here in Lubumbashi. I was born in Corvette, I grew up in Lubumbashi. Oh, it's very good. So I'm, I'm coming back. So you're very proud you came back. We'll quickly finish finishing with some remedies that you propose for women because like many women look at this moment and we don't have a lot of time left. It's like the pictures say one the pictures say they need to have good habits. We try to get to the, root, the good routines. So if you have traction alopecia, you have to stop the traction because it causes and creates the same effect. So we can't give you treatment if you continue to abuse your hair by, by pulling, pulling so hard. You should not have a headache, ladies. When you are braided, your daughters should not be traumatized because we have to start combing them through. We all have memories of our sisters between our mothers and aunts. Uh, with a comb, pulling the kids, crying. In fact, it shouldn't be like this. It traumatizes the hair. It traumatizes. So that's why we have to relearn a good hair routine, the afro hair. How should it be treated? The first thing is to detangle. You don't comb an afro hair dry. You detangle it first. You use sprays. You, when it's untangled, you can start combing. But from the tip of the root and not from the root, as our sisters did. So that's the first one. Yes, it's learning all these gestures that don't traumatize the hair. Give up pulling, relaxing is a problem. Ladies, you know this. We, we do it a lot and we know what it is. Then we have the wigs, the extensions. But there's an inflammation that comes. It's like an allergy. Like something that will make you itch with all these extensions. So it doesn't just uh, make you itch, it's the allergy. It's the information your body sends to say to you something's going wrong because normally we're not supposed to be itching if I'm with you and you start scratching you're not going to realise something's not right but I've internalised and accepted this gesture as if something normal and usually it's a way that you are allergic to a cat or a dog you can be allergic to hair extensions it's be because it's someone's hair it means it's protein. You can be allergic to proteins, the same as allergic to a dog or a cat. Proteins in the hair also, in the same way the extensions can be allergic. Even if it's natural, you can be allergic, no matter if it's Brazilian, the most expensive and all that. You can be allergic and it starts itching. If it's synthetic, it's the same thing, the same way. Some women, if they put on jewellery, gold or silver, they get also allergies and we see that so that's the first sign I always say our body defends itself the body has an army when there is an aggression the first soldiers are sent to the front and they drop bombs then they drop products into the bloodstream to protect themselves and it is these bombs which is an inflam inflammatory hair environment create inflammation which causes the hair root to be attacked and therefore the hair is programmed to divide X number amount of times but since then there is this chronic inflammation, the number of cells divide, it, it will decrease and then the hair no longer grows or falls out and it's not replaced. So it's a problem to understand your body from the moment you reach to when you stop. <laughs> so let's finish excuse me you have many other things to do I know you know you've said a lot and before you go and you've also given us quite a lot of your time it's a huge subject we could talk about it for hours I come back to Lubambushi because I saw the pandemic unfortunately we we're obliged to limit the number of people in the room to respect uh, all of the all the, the gestures, the barriers, but really the word is that, especially for little girls, please teach them to take care of their hair, not to look for beauty, uh, ways from styles, 
I, I spoke in a school, the student said to me, oh yes, but we have braided hair, we're not allowed to have a bun or natural hair, so I told them, I told the prefect I was happy because he invited me to talk to his students, it's the holidays, I, I said to them, change the, ha the rules, change the habits, you have to accept that people can come with buns or natural hair because society thinks it's natural is not good. Let's be natural. Yeah, actually you have to accept it. This is our hair, God made us this way. We have to start accepting ourselves. And that is the word that I want to say. That's perfect. Thank you, Doctor. Really, thank you for your presence. The mothers, in any case you've heard, I don't even have to comment. Thank you, Dr. Bizanga. See you again in Lubambashi. Thank you very much, Doctor. Goodbye, and see you soon, Dr. Bizanga, hair transplant surgeon. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, we make new content every week, so be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notification of our new videos. Take care and see you soon.